Hi everyone, I'm Tom Salato. I'm the owner of Starry Night Entertainment and I've gotten a lot of emails and letters from brides asking me to explain how you plan your wedding reception. So what I'm going to do is go through it with you very quickly, okay? And then if you have any questions or anything, you can always call me at 203-988-0319 or email me at starrynightnitedjs at gmail.com. If you just go to my website, you'll see all that. Also, if you go to my website, you'll see this. This is the wedding coordination worksheet. That's what we're going to use to plan your wedding. Okay? So what I'd like you to do is go to my website, www.starrynightnitedjs.com and there's a link there for wedding coordination worksheet. Print that out and you'll see everything that we're going to go through on these sheets, okay? This is how you plan your wedding reception. If you do not have a DJ or an MC or a company that will come to your house and sit with you and plan everything that you guys love out together, please give me a call because they should be doing that for the money they charge, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is I get to your house, we sit down, we get comfortable. Before we sit and meet, I've already asked you to put together all the songs that you love, all the songs that you and your family and your guests want to hear at your wedding. All right? Could be anything, even if you can't think of songs, think of artists that you want to hear. Now, a good way to play the songs at the wedding, just so you know, is during dinner you want to play a lot of love songs. Dinner love songs give the older people an opportunity to get up and dance and join in the wedding before things get crazy. The other thing you want to put into dinner are the songs that you love but aren't that danceable. For example, the Dave Matthews Band, Coldplay. Those you want to play during dinner too. The Allman Brothers. The really good songs, upbeat music. You just can't dance to them. So later on we're going to keep it dancing, okay? Now, when you get to your wedding... It's, we're probably going to be in the cocktail hour. During cocktail hour, you're going to be taking pictures most likely. I'll be inside, and I'll be playing the best jazz from all the different generations, okay? Not Kenny G jazz, you know, where you want to drive off the cliff. It's, I can't stand. The really best jazz, Charlie Parker, Miles Davis, Ella Fitzgerald, all right? Um, we can also throw in some really good rock music there. Whatever you guys want to hear, it's your wedding. All right? When the cocktail hour is over, I'll come out to where you are and I'll line everybody up. Now we start following the worksheet. Okay? When we sit together, you're going to give me the names first of all your grandparents and parents that are either going to walk in or be acknowledged. Acknowledgement means that they're sitting at a table, and before I get started, I'd like to welcome the bride's grandmother, Mira, or whatever. Let's have a big round of applause for her, and same thing. Then we get to the formal announcements, and we start with your parents and your grandparents. You're going to give me the names of the couples as they walk in. For each group of people, you can have their own individual songs to walk into. So, we say... The grandma, please welcome the grandmother of the bride. And she walks in. She can have her own individual song, which I can cut and splice. Or she can come in as part of the group song. Okay, so your grandmother comes in. Your grandparents come in. Then we introduce the parents in. And it's bride and then groom. Okay? Again, the parents, each couple can have their own little bit of a song that they enjoy. And you have to ask them. Or we can have one big song for all the parents. Then we invite in the flower girl and the ring bearer if you're using them. And a lot of times they have their own little funny song too. Sometimes they use Spongebob, whatever they enjoy. Okay. The more things you can make fun at the wedding, the more memorable the wedding would be. And that's what we're looking forward to. Then we get to the bridal party. When we announce your bridal party in, Again, each couple can have their own little bit of a song or a snippet, or the whole bridal party can have their song, okay? And what we've used in the past, and I have lists of these songs up on, on my website, a lot of people last year used the Black Eyed Peas, Let's Get It Started, or I Got a Feeling. 
anything you guys want. It could be Walk This Way, it could be Michael Jackson, anything you want, we'll work it together. If each couple has their own little individual song, they can come in voguing and do their own little bits, okay? And when I sit with you to plan your wedding, we'll go through each thing that I've seen over the years that maybe they can use. Then we do your maid of honor or your matron if she's married and the best man. They come in, they can have their own song. And then the formal announcement of the married couple into the wedding. Mr. and Mrs. Remember, there's two parts to a wedding. The first part are the formalities, Mr. and Mrs. Brokaw. And the second part, after you cut the cake, keep as many people dancing all night as you can. And in between there, you want to keep them interested in your wedding too, okay? We introduce you in. The bridal party stands behind you, and you have your first dance. It's your special dance. You have to dance your whole first dance. The reason for that is you're so in love, but the second part of that is it's the best time for the photographer to get those pictures. You're never going to look as good as you do during your first dance for the rest of the wedding. If you save it till later to get pictures of you guys dancing, you're going to have spaghetti sauce on your shirt, and he's not going to be able to find his jacket, and you might have cake smashed all the ways up and down you. Do it now. Look lovingly at each other. Tell your bridal party to look lovingly at you, and you'll have great pictures for your wedding. After the first dance, you have an option. You can dance, the bride can dance with her father, and then the groom can dance with his mother directly after your first dance. I prefer to put it at the beginning of the wedding. A lot of venues will tell you to put it after you cut the cake, but don't. Do it at the beginning of the wedding. Again, you're never going to look that good, but... People are paying attention at this point. Right after dinner, everybody runs to the bar and you'll never see them again. Okay? And the noise level is, comes up pretty loud. So make sure you do those dances now. Pick a song. It doesn't have to be your father. It could be any significant person in your life. Pick a song that shows that you really care for each other. Could be your brother. Could be an uncle who helped you out. Brides have even danced a lot with their mothers since they might not have a father in the situation. It's all perfectly acceptable and it's beautiful. Same thing with the groom, you know? What you want to do as those second and third songs come out, if you want to cut those songs, I'll be standing next to you. So, you know, give me a little nod and we'll bring the music up and hey, it was a beautiful, beautiful song. That's why I always bring a second DJ with me. When I'm out on the floor with you doing the formal stuff, he or she can be back at the board running the music up and down and taking my cues so everything runs seamlessly. It's always important to have two DJs or an MC and a DJ at your wedding. Okay? I happen to not charge for the second person. I pay them out of my pocket. All right? After that, after you get through with the dances, Everybody sits down and we do the toasts. When I talk to your bride, when I talk to your maid of honor or whoever's doing the toast, your best man, I'll make sure I tell them hold the microphone close up here. A lot of people read and they hold the microphone down, and that causes a problem because we have to keep turning the volume up to catch them. Okay? I'll talk to them. I'll work with them on that. After that, you might choose to have somebody in the crowd do a blessing over the food, and then you go to dinner. Again, dinner music is a lot of love songs from the different generations. Don't discount that. A lot of the older people feel that they're not going to dance later on. And a lot of them come up to me and request songs. Oh, this was my wedding song. You have Lionel Richie or whatever it is. Yeah, I have it. And it's beautiful because it includes them in your wedding. Okay? Again, they might not dance later on, but now gives them the opportunity. We announce the dance floor is open during dinner. Please come out and join us on the dance floor. If you hear something that you like or come up and request it. Okay? After dinner, I come over to you, I say, guys, let's cut the cake. Knowing that once we cut the cake, the party starts, the real party. We've done everything well up to this point. If you go to my website, there's tips on fun things to do while you cut the cake. I won't go into them now. I set you up, and I ask the photographer to make sure that you're looking at his camera and smiling as you plunge into the cake. You might or might not want to smash each other. That's fine. Um, it's completely up to you and your personalities. What I've done in the past 
is you have your best man and, and uh, your maid of honor standing next to you, and on the count of three, you turn around and smash them. And you know, it's fun and everything else. The more memorable things you could do at your wedding, the better. And we'll get into that in a later video, okay? Cut the cake, we go right into the dancing. The dancing is strongly based on two things. One, your preference of music. That song list that you gave me with all your favorite artists and all those songs that you love to dance to gives me an indication of what you like and what genre of music you like. You might love Top 40. You know, you might, you might hate Top 40. You might love the oldies. You might love Love Shack or whatever it is. Let me know and then I work that through the whole night. My main goal after we cut the cake, incidentally, is to make sure that everybody's up dancing as much as they can. So the other thing that I do is I plow through all the different generations of music, starting from the 50s and 60s, the 80s, some 70s. Some of you have aunts that come up to me and want the 70s, so I'm gonna have to put it on. Try it all out. Just try all the music out. You have three full hours now to dance. Some of the guys might want some harder stuff to play, like Nirvana or the Beastie Boys. If you throw three or five of them in the middle there, you know, and the guys are all stiff and dancing and banging into each other, that's great. You know, that's wonderful. You have three full hours. You go through Motown, you go all the way up through the 80s, the 90s, Marky Mark and Salt and Peppa, and all the way, you know, Big Poppy and everything, and even into Top 40. The other important issue here is that those of you that are having an open bar, the dancing gets much better as people get drunk, okay? So just remember, people are warming up at this point. You know, they're, they're coming in, they're going, they just ate, they're going to the bar. The last hour and a half of your wedding should be a blowout, a huge blowout. And by the time, you know, your aunts are drunk and with the skirts up over their head, they'll all be out there dancing to everything. And you want to save the newer music to later in the night because what you want to do really, as far as dancing goes, and don't tell anybody, you want to kind of burn the older people out early in the dancing. So then they go and they talk to each other and then the young people with the stamina, the people who were used to being out in clubs, actually come out to the dance floor and stay out on the dance floor. You know? And then you just keep mixing it. Whoever's dancing, whatever's working best, you just keep doing it. And you have a great time at your wedding. Okay? The last thing you might want to choose is a last dance song for yourselves. Again, that's predicated on when the photographer is going to leave if you want pictures of that. But, but again, you got pictures of yourself dancing together. Before that, you might want to do a couple things. A lot of brides and grooms elect to do something called an anniversary dance. What that is, is you call all the couples, doesn't have to be just married couples, all the couples out on the dance floor, and you play a couple love songs. And I sit there and say, whoever's been married less than 10 years, please dance your way to the outside of the dance floor. Everybody else move in, except the people that aren't married. They're on the outside of the dance floor, too. We're just asking them to join in. And then you go, whoever's been married less than 20 years, 30 years, you guys stay out on the dance floor the whole time. You dance this whole dance. At the end, you're going to be left with the last two couples that have been married the longest, usually a, a great uncle or parents or grandparents or whatever. And I'll go up to them and ask them, you know, do you have any words of advice for the bride and groom? What it does for your wedding is you'll see during dinner, I might be playing Motown or something, and you'll see a lot of the women bopping around and stuff, but their husbands are at the bar. This gives them an opportunity to dance at your wedding with their husband, which is really super important. All those people that are dancing here might not have danced all night, but now they've danced and participated in your wedding at least one time. The other thing that it does is, those last couples that are left standing, everybody knows them. They've been in the family forever, the families are there, they love them. I ask, usually the old guy's a scooch, you know, do you have any words of advice for them? And then, you know, he says something, you know, a little offhanded, but it's funny. And everybody will remember that about your wedding. It takes five minutes, and they'll remember that they danced at your wedding. The other thing that you gotta consider is, do you wanna do the whole garter bouquet bit? The way it works is this, traditionally. You invite all the single brides up, you throw the bouquet. The bride sits down, I mean all the single women, the bride sits down, 
her husband goes and takes the garter off her leg. Then he throws the garter to the single men. And traditionally, whoever caught the bouquet, the guy who caught the garter puts it on her leg. It could cause trouble at Italian weddings, I'll tell you right now, because if it's not his, uh, the girl's boyfriend who caught the garter, the other guys are standing around with steaming while this guy's doing the whole sexy thing. You can elect just to throw the bouquet or just to throw the bouquet garter. You can throw the bouquet, but I'll invite, instead of just single women, all the women up. And whoever catches the bouquet, traditionally, it's a sign of luck. You can put an incentive on it, too, and say there's a $50 Kohl's gift card hidden in the bouquet for whoever catches it and invite everybody up. Same thing with the garter. You give a little incentive, then everybody's there to do it. And of course, we put fun music behind it, too. Okay? Then in your last dance, say your wedding ends at 12. I'll start looking for both of you around 11, 11.30 and say, do you want to get this last slow dance in? The reason I do that is because about an hour before the wedding ends, the older people are leaving and they're coming and they're grabbing at you and pulling you off. Okay? Or you might be at the bar for a little while. I want to make sure that I have both of you there so that you enjoy your last dance. And then we just party the rest of the night out. The main thing is planning. Everything we just went through, and you'll see it on the wedding coordination worksheet, everything that we just went through is very, very, very important that you plan it. And then it's up to me to send you what I call an itinerary. And again, there's samples on my site too. The itinerary plans out step by step everything that we talked about. And if I need something, if I need a song for your first dance that you didn't have when we planned it, I'll email it to you and you'll see big red letters, we need a song here. Or what's the order that they're being announced in, whatever it is. So you'll know that on that night you don't have to worry about a thing. Everything is planned out step by step and I'm there to help you take care of your wedding. That's the main thing that your coordinator or your MC or your DJ does. 99% of them don't do this with you. But this is the thing that's made me successful over the years. So I hope everything here has helped you. If you have any questions at all, go to my website. There are tons of articles and tips and wedding planning information, songs and lists and videos of how everything looks. Check it all out. Give me an email or give me a call, and I'd be more than happy to help you do your wedding and plan your wedding. Okay? And our prices are great, by the way. They're the best in Connecticut. So enjoy yourselves, don't get nervous, get excited about your wedding, and if you need anything at all to help plan your wedding, please give me a call. Have a great night. See ya. Bye.